What's good, YouTube? Happy Easter. You know, everybody's mad at Larry Fink. And I'm actually, I actually like what he had to say. Watch some of these interviews that he gave uh, to different news organizations. And, you know, he, I liked what he had to say because he's telling the truth. He's saying we need to rethink retirement. Now, we talk about retirement a lot on this channel and how to get prepared for retirement. But the truth of the matter is, guys, 50% uh, of Americans have nothing saved for retirement. Nothing. Zero. And then I think like the next 30% of Americans have less than $100,000 saved. So probably only about two out of 10 people has any significant retirement savings. One, one in five, one out of five people in America has anything significant saved for retirement. And uh, people are mad at Larry Fink. They're, uh, you know, they're angry at him for, for telling the truth and saying, well, you know, people are living longer. And Social Security was never meant as a pension. It, it was meant to take care of the the elderly, but the elderly, you know, back then didn't live uh, for, you know, 30, 40 years after, after retirement. They lived like, you know, five years. And there were m much more workers than retire retirees at that point. And that's, I guess that's really what this whole... Um, what do you call it? The whole um, population uh, story that everyone's talking about. You know, we have to keep the population growing and growing and growing so that we have so we have more workers to take care of all the retirees. Well, that just doesn't sound sustainable to me. And I, I think Larry agrees. And, and he gave some practical advice. He said, well, you could either work longer. And that really made people mad. They're like, oh, how dare he suggest people work longer. Who is he? Some billionaire. You know, well, I mean, for one thing, he's quite old himself and he's still working. So, you know, he, he, I think people assume people have such limited ideas of what work is. They think, you know, they're going to be, uh, you know, bagging groceries. They're going to be greeting people at Walmart. They're going to be washing cars. They're going to be, uh, you know, working a checkout line at Target. Those, those are like little kid jobs. Like those are jobs that typically teenagers would work while they're in high school. And hopefully by the time that you're an adult, you've moved beyond that. And by the time you're in your fifties or sixties, you're a professional at something and you're, and you're, you're not even considering working at a, a movie theater, you know, serving popcorn you know you're, you're not thinking about these low level entry level service level jobs but for some reason that's all anybody the majority of americans are just stuck at this entry level mindset and they and they haven't figured out how to move into a professional job now if you don't set goals for yourself then you're just going to land into a uh, a hard, a difficult job that's not going to pay you much, which is where I was for, for many years, you know, and uh, I worked a very hard job, very, very long night shift job in a, uh, uh, I, can I, I guess I can go ahead and start telling you guys this stuff. It was so long ago. I've been very careful not to reveal too much private information, but it's, it's been so long ago. I could possibly start talking about some stuff. Well, I'll tell you guys this. Okay. All right, here it comes. I'm going to tell you guys. I work in the pharmaceutical industry. All right. I'm a big pharma kind of guy. That's that's me. That's what, how I make so much money. I am big pharma. Yep. Yep. I know. I'm the devil. I know. I, I actually helped develop the uh, vaccines for uh, COVID and flu and measles, mumps, and rubella and shingles. And uh, I think those are the big ones. Those are the big ones that I've helped develop. And I, I mean, physically manufacture, like hands-on physically manu manufacturing these vaccines. That's what I did 
a uh, long time ago i was i was a production technician in big pharma i'm not going to tell you which one i got to keep i've already told you probably enough but um i worked the night shift in a manufacturing uh, in a pharmaceutical manufacturing facility a vaccine manufacturing facility and a 12 hour night shift and we had to break down these um, uh, machines and clean them out change the gaskets and clean the valves and then rebuild them every night and extremely complex machines i'll actually show you pictures of them i don't have them uh available right now but i'll, I'll show you next time i'll show you these this, this uh, equipment that i worked on very tough job and didn't really pay a lot considering how difficult it was um but i was making decent money i was i thought at the time i thought i was king of the world right um making you know like fifty two thousand dollars doing that not not a lot really looking back not a, not a whole lot but it was enough and it was more than i had ever made anywhere else and um but eventually i got tired of that and that's when i moved into it and i make a ton of money doing more analytical type work and i, I still work in in pharmaceutical industry and i'm, I'm against the 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 vaccine mandate, by the way, I, I, I am not in favor of forcing people to take vaccines. I, I like that they should be available to the public. I'm not in favor of, of how the whole pandemic thing was handled and everybody was forced. Guys, you know how many vaccines I've taken in my life? I mean, they pump and you when you work in these facilities, they are pumping you up like, like I get about three, four shots a, a year. Of, of all different kind I have because I have to be immune to everything that we're working with we're working with live viruses and uh, we have to be immune to everything so I, I've had dozens dozens of inoculations in my in my life I get many every year um, I never get sick though I'll tell you one thing I never get sick I never get sick um, so I think they I, I know they work I know they work for the most part, but I'm not in favor of forcing people to take them. I think that just leaves a bad taste. It's, a, it's not the right way to do things. I, I believe in education, making them available. But anyway, the other thing that Larry Fink um, said was people need to invest. If you invest in a 401k or um, gold, for instance, um, or even uh, Bitcoin, pretty much anything. You could buy a Superman comic book. I have comic books that are worth $500 that I bought for $5, uh, you know, 10 years ago. They're already worth $500. There's all kinds of things you can invest in. So if you work a good job and you invest uh, and you develop your skills and your talents, parable of talents, by the time you get to your uh, adult years your pre-senior years your 50s your 60s hopefully you're a millionaire and you can just retire whenever you feel like it or you can keep working if you have a great job watch these interviews though i like what he has to say very smart guy i've followed larry for a very long time by the way one of the companies that i used to work for was acquired by blackstone which is like um i'm, I'm I'm not super clear on the relationship between BlackRock and Blackstone. I think they were the same company at one point, and then they split off into different companies. But they basically do the the venture capital type investing, and that that really helped get me into investing. I started understanding things. Um, I could tell you guys a lot about this sort of thing, and um, I, I look forward to sharing some some insights with you guys. I've worked with a lot of massive massive corporations from the, the the innermost levels and what else can i i wanted to show you this chart this is the behavioral effect on investor returns called the dalbar study now what's interesting is you know how they're always talking about gold has the lowest returns it's a it's a it's a, a terrible investment no cash flow well look what's number one here 
over from 2001 to 2020, so about 20 years, 20 years of returns, gold came in number one. At over 10%, guys, over 10%. Now, I talk about this a lot, and I'm going to add this chart to my collection of charts that proves that gold is the number one asset you want to hold. Um, and, they, and they found that it's because of the behavioral effects. So the average investor is barely beating inflation. The average investor makes about 2.9%, and that's because they're investing in stocks and bonds and international like these things in homes homes are a terrible investment guys their homes are, are not even an investment there is just, it's just an expensive toy for the middle class that you've been fooled into thinking is a is a good use of your money it's absolutely not you should be renting a very small apartment and investing your money in the stock market and gold and i don't do s p 500 by the way guys i i do small cap value Okay, but that's a different story for a different time. Most people put the most, uh, the bulk of their money into their homes, which is a terrible investment, and they're jumping in and out of uh, S and P five hundred and international and bonds, a, a goofy mix of all these terrible investments. Now REITs, we don't talk about a lot on this channel, and the only thing I have against REITs is that they they are taxed very heavily. They do not get the qualified uh, tax treatment that uh, normal equities get, normal normal investments. So I, th I actually think REITs are probably good for uh, maybe re retirees in a way because at that point, uh, if, you, if you're... Uh, your income is lower. You could be in a, in a lower tax bracket. So you're and you're spending that money anyway. So you're not reinvesting it. You're actually spending it. Then REITs could be a good income producer. Way better than bonds. Way better than bonds. Bonds are a terrible investment. I will never own bonds again ever. International is not even that good. I have reduced my international exposure, and I'm very heavy right now on domestic, but not S and P 500 or REITs. I'm very heavy in small cap value and gold those are, those are the the top two investments in my portfolio but what's interesting is 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 uh, i just want to show you this uh little chart real quick and that gold has the highest return of all other asset classes oil i don't even know what they mean by oil. what do they mean by who's, who's investing in, in oil west texas crude oil intermediate price return i, I don't i don't know what the i don't know what they mean by that I uh, wanted to shout out uh, Corporate McMahon, very cool guy. He told me to look into Sigma males, and he said, I'm a Sigma male, and I said, okay, he's actually said it a few times, and I was like, yeah, okay, that's cool, and I, but he's like, you know, look it up, and I was like, all right, I'm going to look it up this time, and he's right. We're going to talk about that next time. Uh, I know the video is already getting long, but... Uh, Sigma males, yeah, I, I'm, I'm feeling that energy. I'm feeling that. Uh, shout out to Corporate McMahon. Shout out to Homestead. And shout out to DMPI. Those are, those are like, um, I don't want to say my top three. I don't want to start ranking, uh, you know, subscribers like that. But th they are top three of today. We got to shout out those three in particular. DMPI, Homestead Aquarius, and Corporate McMahon. Um, very cool people. Uh, I hate shouting out people because I'm I can't shout out everybody and then someone's like he didn't shout me out. How you know it's like I know guys I, I'll do like three a video okay. Uh, there's definitely more than three people who I I can I I can thank for your your very good comments, uh, very very good comments, very loyal subscribe subscribers. Um. You know, one thing I, I want to do on this channel is I want to give you guys the value. I don't want to waste your time. So I try to keep the videos short, to the point, and full of good information. Not a lot of blah, blah, blah. And I'm sick of the victim mindset in America. I, I follow a lot of uh, financial people. And every now and then they get all victim minds. It's like, it's getting hard for the middle class. It's so difficult. Man, shut up. Fuck all that shit. Everybody I know is a winner. 
And if you act, start acting like a loser, people will cut you off. Believe that. So you better, you better act like a winner. Uh, that's one thing I noticed when I was socializing these past couple of days. When you come up to someone, you need to demonstrate value off the, off the rip. Because if I don't see value in you, then I don't really want to talk to you. And I've, I've been in the, in the flip of that situation. When you're young, you don't understand that. But the sooner you can start demonstrating value, you'll start to see people will open doors for you. They will want to work with you if you look like you have something about you. Now, if you come up, see people, we push this humble crap too much, man. People actually, that, that humble stuff won't actually work well for you in a corporate world. You got to step up and, and, and look like you're swinging. You got to look like you're swinging something, buddy. Uh, don't nobody want to work with a wimp. Uh, last thing, uh, I, I did visit a Buddhist uh, temple. This was years ago, but I thought about it from yesterday. And uh, I, I went there and people were meditating and I asked uh, the, the monk who was there, very cool guy. I like, I like the whole Buddhist thing. I've, I've spent time at, a, at a, a local temple many years ago just to check them out, see what was going on. I, I liked what I saw though. It was very chill, very welcoming, very positive, very good energy. And they introduced me to meditation. I said, what are, like, what are y'all doing? He's like, we're meditating. I said, cool. Um, he's like, would you like to try? I was like, yeah, let me try that. So, uh, you know, I took my shoes off and sat on like a pillow and you have to like sit on the floor and they had like a big shrine, like a big Buddha shrine at the front. And he's like, just like get comfortable and like close your eyes and and focus on your breathing and clear your mind clear your head i was like okay so i I did that i sat down closed my eyes started breathing you know and uh i cleared my head i was like now what he's like no 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 just just clear your head keep doing that i was like my head is clear brother my head is empty i have um, it is emptiness hollow and he said then you have obtained enlightenment. I said, my man. <laughs> yeah, buddy. So I, I am very enlightened, guys. I, I walk with the spirit of Christ, the spirit of Buddha, and um, the spirit of Elijah. I am a blessed, blessed holy man here to spread enlightenment. Well, oh, it looks like baseball is starting. Um, so I'm going to go watch the Braves game and I do have more stories to tell you guys. Uh, I don't want the videos to get super long though, but I do have some entertaining stories to tell you guys. So we will get to that next time. I hope you have a great Easter to those who celebrate and, um, keep stacking gold and keep, keep having a great life and I'll see you next time. Take care.